Today we are perfecting the single target elimination combatant. This build combines the Vengeance Paladin subclass, adding in Sorcerer and a touch of Cleric. With this build we still learn every Vengeance Paladin specific spell, with the addition of spell slots up to level 5, and a much more impactful bonus action, with options to use Sorcery points and extra attacks utilizing Warpriest and Great Weapon Master. So let's build it. As we get into creating our character, there's not really a roleplay aspect of this build as much as there is a playstyle, so go ahead and roleplay this however you want. Pick whatever race that you want. I'm going to select Half Work because I actually have not used it yet in any of my playthroughs, and because they get Savage Attacks, which gives an extra die to critical hit damage. We will be up in people's faces, critting with advantage very often, so that will come in handy spectacularly. As for class, we're going to go ahead and pick... Paladin and the Oath of Vengeance. This will lean into that build of getting in people's faces, getting advantage, and eliminating a single target with ease. As far as the background goes, I'm going to go with Soldier here. You can go with anything you want that fits the build. It is a fairly high charisma build, so you can go ahead and select something that adds to the ability to make this the face if you want to play it this way. You could also do something like Outlander if you want it, or Criminal if you wanted to have a little bit more role playing into the sort of the dark and mysterious vibe, but I'm going to go with Soldier. This is just the most badass frontline guy that there is. As far as abilities, the, to note here, we're going to max out Strength and Charisma, or almost max out Strength and Charisma with 16. You do have the option to pump something up to 17 if you really want to. You could, of course, do this if you want to um, take advantage of something like the Hag's Hair, but there are other ways to get Strength. Uh, if you know a certain Asterian fellow, you can go ahead and get a 2 Strength bonus by bringing him along to the mid game. It is a little bit low in deck, so we're not going to have amazing turn priority, but hopefully the the um, the gods, the rolling gods will be with us, or perhaps you can give an item that will give you a plus one or plus two buff to keep you from going last. Strength characters are always tough because you have to kind of choose between strength and dexterity, especially as a paladin, where con, charisma, and strength, a three stat character can be tough. Um, as far as abilities, if we could, I would probably max out something up here just because we are going to be in people's faces. But since we only have limited options, I'll just pretend that this is going to be the face of my party. And we'll go ahead and give him insight and persuasion. The first thing we are going to do at level 2 is actually take a dip in cleric. Now the cleric cantrips aren't going to be fantastically useful, but you can grab guidance if you don't have another character that can use it. I would probably grab resistance in case there's a random saving throw that pops up and, and uh, in dialogue you get a little bit of help with that. And then you can select something like Blade Ward or if you need some help in the darkness, one of those other ones. The key component here is we are going to select the subclass War Domain. By selecting the subclass we'll get spells that we're already going to have access to as a paladin so not a lot of help there. But we get War Priest Charges which means we get three extra attacks with a bonus action whenever we damn well choose, meaning that we essentially have extra attack occasionally in the early part of the game, which is a huge power buff, especially as a frontline character. As far as your deity goes, you can go ahead and pick whatever you want. I'm going to go with Glitter Gold. We'll pretend that we're a greedy, vengeful, greedy character. And then you get a cleric spell. Um, we have low wisdom, so I would advise against something that attacks or requires a saving throw, so probably... The most helpful one would be Healing Word. This is not a spell we get as a Paladin, so it will be extremely useful for rubber banding, getting people back up into the fight. We can move on to Paladin level 2, total level 3. Yes, we're going to hop back into Paladin, and we'll get our Paladin spellcasting and a fighting style. With our fighting style, we're going to select Great Weapon Fighting. This will be a two-hand build, of course. You can build however you want, but this is going to be a great weapon master build up in your face, attacking with advantage. So I'll select this fighting style. As far as prepared spells go, there are some spells that fit and some spells that are useful. Bless is useful on every character that can learn it. It's a great spell. If you don't already have a blesser, it's very helpful. Heroism can be useful in the early game. Getting five temporary hit points per turn is a pretty darn good buff. And avoiding frightened is a nice little bonus. Command is very useful. As a crowd control, can be upcast very well throughout the whole game. If you wanted to pick something like Compelled to Duel, you could, or Shield of Faith, you certainly could. But I'm just going to go ahead and add the Frightening Smite um, and the Smite that knocks people off of cliffs. And we will move on to our next level, which will be Paladin. I believe we have, so we have the third, fourth, and fifth level of Paladin coming up. 
At level 3, since we are a Vengeance Paladin, well, just as a Paladin in general, we'll get Divine Health, which means we cannot get diseased. But as a Vengeance Paladin, we will get our Vow of Enmity, Enmity, which will be a very, uh, which is a key item or key ability for this build and any Vengeance build in general. You get advantage just for free. Just a bonus action and an oath charge, and you get advantage on an attack roll against an enemy for 10 turns, which is fantastic. We also get things like Bane, which is a good debuff early game, and Hunter's Mark, which um, is only one spell slot and constant damage until a long, long rest if you're not going to use other concentrations. So if you want to add a little bit of damage to anything, you certainly can. Our spell slots, uh, we get an additional spell that we can keep prepared. You can pick whatever you want. This added Cure Wounds automatically. We'll just use that and we'll say that our Paladin with Lay on Hands, Cure Wounds, and Healing Words will be a Vengeful Healer. So at Paladin level 4, we're going to get uh, another Lay on Hands charge and some more spell slots. You can go ahead and add whatever spell you want, but the key here is we're going to get a Feet. Now this is going to be a 2 Feet character. And the order that you choose them really doesn't matter. We're going to choose Great Weapon Master and we're going to choose Sentinel. I'm going to go ahead and select Great Weapon Master early just because the extra 10 damage uh, at level 5 can be humongous. It's always nice to have an extra 10 damage, but the earlier in the game that the, you get the extra 10 damage bonus, the better. As we move to Paladin level 5, we get our extra attack. We also get second level Paladin spells as well as our Oath spells. Now, Hold Person is a phenomenal spell to have as a vengeful character and of course Misty Step is good on every single character in the game. We have we have eight available prepared slots. You can go ahead and slide any of them in. Unfortunately, I don't think that there's uh, a lot of really good level 2 paladin spells. This just plopped eight in there. It's never a bad thing to buff everybody's HP, so we'll leave that there and that is going to be it for paladin. Now paladin if we took it for one more level, we would get some more defensive auras. We would get our Aura of Protection adding to our saving throws, which would be very, very useful. But this is not about defense. This is an offensive character. So we're going to go slide into the Sorcerer and make this a Saladin or a Porcerer. We're going to make this a, sa a Sorcerer-Paladin combo. Uh, you can go ahead and select any cantrips that you want. We're not going to use a lot of them. If it's the face character, you can go ahead and select friend if that's going to be useful for you. If you need to see in the darkness, it's really whatever you choose. The key here is that we do get sorcerer spells now. First recommendation, if you're not taking shield right away, uh, you're probably missing out. That's an absolutely phenomenal spell that is as good at, at this level, at the first level, at whatever level. It's always good. It only costs one spell slot. It's one of the best spells in the game. If you need uh, a ritual spell, you could grab it here. If you don't, you could grab something like a damaging spell, something like Magic Missile if you want to make sure you can finish people off, something like Thunder Wave if you want to blow people off of a cliff, or Burning Hands if you want a nice little fiery AOE. I'm just going to select Magic Missile because, you know, actually, you know what? I'm going to select Thunder Wave because knocking people off of bridges is cool. As far as our subclass goes, we are going to select Draconic Bloodline, and the Ancestry really actually does matter here we're going to go ahead and select white because that gives us armor of agathis so we don't have to take any sort of dip into warlock in order to get this sweet armor one of the best um one of the best buffs in the game and also you can go ahead and add whatever sort of scales you want i'm going to take them off i don't think that they look particularly good so i'll just take them off and we'll keep going all the way out in sorcerer now, at level 2 for Sorcerer, level 8 overall, we're just going to get more spells. Go ahead and grab whatever you want. I'll grab Burning Hands. But we are going to get Meta Magic. This is where things start to get very interesting. I find that the Paladin doesn't have the most use for spell casting and bonus actions, and this really remedies that issue. I'm going to go ahead and select Twin Spell, just because being able to target two people is quite nice. And uh, the other three I'm not a huge fan of, so we can just select Careful Spell in case we ever want to really blast somebody <laughs> who's in the way. Uh, but the other three are kind of, you know, take it or leave it. So pick whichever one you want. You also have the option to change out a spell, but we are not going to. We're just going to keep on trucking along as a sorcerer. Four more levels to go with sorcerer. We're going to we're gonna get a higher level spells here, level two. Now, this is a hunter killer character. So we're going to try and pick some things that fit into that mold. I think a natural fit here is blindness. Run right up to blind people, run right up to them and hit them in the face. <laughs> Never going to be a bad thing. The key here at this level, at level 3, is that we are going to get Quickened 
spell. Probably the most overpowered thing in the game. If you want to replace spells, you certainly can, but we're just going to keep moving along in Sorcerer and keep building up those Sorcery points. At level 4, we're going to get another cantrip. Like I said, pick whatever you want. And we're going to get another second level spell. Um, I don't know what's super fitting here. I'm going to select Enlarge Reduce, the idea that we could make ourselves enormous and then absolutely savage attack crit smite people. Seems pretty scary, and that's kind of what this build is about. And then, of course, we have our last feat. Like I mentioned, it's not going to be an ability score improvement for me. You could, of course, increase Charisma to increase that spell save DC, increase your strength to increase your chance of hitting and your damage, but I am going to grab Sentinel. We are going to be up in people's face, intimidating them, dealing damage, moving around the battlefield, getting up in people's faces, and the idea that they cannot run away from us if we hit them with this and we get a free advantage an advantage means double the chance to crit, which means double the chance to crit smite. So I think Sentinel works out a little bit better than maybe a standard ability score improvement for the way that this plays. Two more levels in Sorcerer now. At level 5, we're going to get those high, uh, that big spell power jump with our level 3 spells. Of course, Fireball is always an option, but I think Haste makes the most sense here. Anytime you have an opportunity to take Haste, I think it's huge. I'll also go ahead and get rid of Burning Hands because I don't think I'm really going to use that too much. And you can grab something else for maybe a control spell or a help yourself out spell. You can select bur Blur if you want it to make yourself harder to hit, which is going to be nice because we're going to be in the middle of combat a lot. I'm going to select Fear. And then after in our next level, we're going to select Slow because these are control spells and Fear fits the mold of being in people's faces. They see me coming at them with raw vengeance and we're just going <laughs> to hunt them down and kill them. At level 6, our last level, we will get Elemental Affinity. When you cast a spell that deals damage with the type associated, you get to add your Charisma. We don't actually have any cold spells, so that won't really come in handy. Unless it procs with Armor of Agathis, I am not sure. We also have the ability to gain Resistance to Cold. Cold's not a super common uh, damage type, so those aren't super useful. The key here is we get another spell to control you could grab something like hypnotic pattern you could grab fireball if you want to blow people up i'm gonna grab slow because i think that this is more of a debuff the enemy buff yourself get in their face show them what you got build that's kind of the key pick your target i'm coming to kill you i'm either going to buff myself or debuff you or both i'm going to be attacking with advantage i'm going to be doing bonus damage i'm going to be smiting i'm going to be in your face so let's see what we can do in action as we go and test out this character. All right, here we are ready to kick up some ruckus. I actually didn't give uh, this character any special items. I don't think that he needs any special items. I think that this is just a build that works with any two-handed weapon or any armor that you want to give him. So let's just go ahead and piss Klaus off here and see if we can show off some of the standard abilities of a Vengeance Paladin and then some of the higher end abilities that we get from this build. So, first things first, we do have Sentinel, which is great. It means if Klaus tries to run away here, which he's too afraid to do, we would have been uh, fine. So, what can we normally do as a Vengeance Paladin? Normally, as a Vengeance Paladin, we can just go ahead and select Vow of Enmity. And now we just have free advantage on whatever damn character we want. So, I can just go ahead and level 2 smite Benji here and see if we can get, out, get him out of this battle, which we certainly can. Now we'll roll the next turn. Klaus is going to try and walk away, and we get that free hit with Sentinel, so he's got nowhere to go. We've got Vengeance to pick up on. You can't be running away. Even with two misses, thanks to the War Priest charge, we do get a third attack, which comes in clutch right there. But that's fairly standard. Um, that's fairly standard stuff here for a Vengeance Paladin. Where does it kind of separate? Where we separate now is the fact that we have all these additional buff spells and sorcery points. So I can go ahead and give myself Armor of Agathis. Now we're doing 25 damage to anybody who dares hit us and have extra HP. As well as the fact that if I go ahead and start this battle here, we can start using some of these sorcerer points to get a humongous advantage. So let's punch this poor gentleman in the face. He's going to attack me. Damn. <laughs> He hit pretty hard. So the interesting thing about that, though, is with Armor of Agath is he hit us for 8 slashing damage. We hit him for 25 cold damage. <laughs> so even with him attacking us, we're fine. We just use our temporary hit points. 
He's absolutely effed now. Fist Ingram's joining the party, which actually might be useful if I can reach him, so let's see if we can. With those sorcery points, we can go ahead and quick and spell something like uh, Hold Person, and because we have higher level spell slots because of the sorcery, we can go ahead and upcast that without fear. And now they're both held, which is very convenient because we're a paladin, which means auto smites. Auto crit smites when somebody's held. <laughs> so he's held, assuming hopefully he fails his saving throw, which he does, which means we can walk. Oh, he does not. Luckily for us, we have three more sorcery points to go, so we can go ahead and cast any debuff that we want on him. It's really up to you. Hold person's probably the best, but just for the sake of uh, varying things up a little bit, I will cast uh, Command Grovel. We'll see if we can get him to lay down for us. He does not. Tis no matter we can just smite his ass like a like a regular old guy even if he doesn't want to fail to our spells but that's kind of the that's kind of the example of the power is we get a nice example of shield here but that's kind of the build the concept for this build the concept here is that normally with a two-handed weapon we're not getting a lot of use out of our bonus actions so we might as well get these sorcerer points to occasionally whenever we want whenever we get the opportunity we can run into a battle if there's a high value target or somebody that we just want to eliminate quickly we can quick and easily cast whole person cast blindness cast command we can haste ourselves, which i didn't even show which is down here and we can become a single target destroyer and then in the meantime he's just a normal paladin with the bonus of things like shield and armor of agathis although he can't seem to hit a tam fly there we go. <laughs> I would definitely be alternating between having a great weapon master on or off, depending on if you have advantage. Um, but he's basically a standard paladin when he's not using sorcery points, plus armor of Agathis and shield. But when he does have sorcery points, he can very quickly run in, command the battlefield without even using an action, and then just lay into people like this sad gentleman here, who's so shocked by our power, he hasn't even moved an inch. So that is what I am calling Seeker Destroyer, Hunter Killer, The Predator. I haven't quite figured out a name yet. That is the Seek and Destroy character. Point at an enemy, grab your two-handed weapon, freeze them, restrain them, halt them, make them fearful. If they try and run away, you've got Sentinel. They're not going anywhere. We're doing huge crit smites. This is a fun, selfish Seeker Destroyer Paladin character. If you want to see more builds... Let me know if there's any classes or specific builds that you'd like to see. Let me know. If you haven't already, check out my avatar-themed builds. They're a little bit less playstyle specific, a little bit more awesome RP specific, but they work very well in this game. This game is fairly balanced, so uh, you don't have to worry too much about min-maxing characters all the time. With that being said, thank you for getting to the end of this video. If you've gotten all this way, uh, toss me a comment or like and subscribe. Makes me feel good. Gives me a nice little validation feeling. That being said, I will talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.